There was never a time. Trials, I'm 
Bahamas Face my ship is tall Seems all would be lost In the God of all comfort Speaks peace to my soul When the God of all comfort Speaks peace to my soul The rough seas are calm The wind seeks to blow No matter how dark may be the night Everything will be alright in the God of all comfort. Speak peace to my soul. When a broken heart leaves me hurting inside, like rain, my tears. All through the night, His voice I hear, and there's no reason to fear, when the God of all comfort speaks peace to my soul, when the God of all comfort speaks peace to my soul, rough seas are calm, the wind seeks to blow, no matter how dark may be the night, everything will be alright when the God of all comfort speaks peace to my soul.
trials and tests to the worst and best. I am never left alone. You've always been right beside me, and you hear me when I pray. And since I first began, you've been my dearest friend, and I just want to give you thanks, thanks. I give you line of that second verse says I give you thanks for this moment and I will continually I'm afraid sometimes we get in a place we was talking about it this morning in Sunday school heard a preacher recently say he said we just go from oh Lord to oh Lord needing something from God but we don't give him thanks for what he's done for us already we should be in a continual state of thankfulness to the Lord amen because he's done so much for us would there be somebody with a word on your heart something you want to say or do at this time Anything at all. Amen. Thank you, honey. 
He's been too good not to say something tonight. Will there be somebody else with a word on your heart? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Would it be somebody else this evening? All hearts free. said it before, I'll say it again, if this was the only group of people that was going to heaven, it'd be an awfully lonely place. I'm glad he's not just here, amen. Will there be somebody else with a word on your heart? Amen. 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 That's good. Amen. Amen. Who's going to pray for them? Amen. Amen. Will there be somebody else with a word on your heart? Keep those in your prayers. Amen. Yeah. Will there be somebody else with a word on your heart? She said, as unworthy as I am, he hears my prayers. That doesn't go for just her tonight. You know that, right? It's a wondrous thing that the God of heaven that created everything cares about what you have to say. That cares about what you care about. The Bible says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Will there be somebody else with a word on your heart this evening? I was thinking about this the other day, this past Wednesday night, we, I was doing music with our, our little kids' classes um, before church, and um, we were we, we 
was we done our normal routine. We sang songs and such. And I remember, but we got down to the end of it, and I went to I went to go dismiss us in prayer and everything. And I and I had I had, I had started praying. And the next thing I knew, I was watching a lot of a lot of those little kids ever. I didn't, and I didn't even tell them to do this. They were all coming up. They were getting on these offers and just. Just wanting, just wanting to get in on on something what God was doing, and, and it just began to it, it began to crawl on my just thinking my mind about how God God can God still wants to hear their hear their prayers and what they and what they want to say to Amen. Them. God cares about what they what they what they feel what they Amen. need, and I and I and I'm thankful that and the Bible says that we at, as we come as a little child and come come with that little faith and I'm. And and I began to just a lot of things just began to roll on me. Just to see about how, how how much God cares about them, and and we think that we've got these big problems here and there, and we think God can't fix it. But the thing is, He can He can still He can still take care of Amen. that if we just come at, come up with the faith as, as a little child, where the Bible says. And that, and that the other night that just helped me so much. It be, it helped me so much to realize there's something still worth going on for. Amen. It doesn't matter what, what life will throw at us. There's still a reason to keep going on. I Amen. I give the Lord thanks for that. Will there be somebody else this evening? Praise the Lord. Y'all go back with me to Acts chapter 4. And uh, this morning, um, I kind of got a little bogged down there and didn't uh, finish my message. So tonight, I'm going to finish my message. And we're going to kind of conclude and, and uh, piggyback off of uh, some of the thoughts we saw this morning that I believe will help us tonight. But I want to say... First of all, I want to say I appreciate God's people minding the leadership of the Lord. Don't ever let your flesh convince you nobody wants to hear your testimony. Don't ever let your flesh convince you. And I say that knowing we will. Amen. Right. Uh, if everybody uh, testified every time the Lord led them to, uh, <clears throat> We'd hear a lot more testimonies if we're being honest. Amen. But sometimes what happens is, is we we allow our flesh to convince us that, you know, nobody wants to hear us. It's not necessary. But I want you to know something, that God, uh, God enjoys you giving Him glory. Amen. And you're never going to be wrong if you give Him glory. Sometimes I think, you know, people have this mindset about testimonies that sometimes they can be inappropriate. Well, when a testimony is inappropriate, it's typically because God's not the one getting the glory. Right, yeah. right. Amen. Somebody gets up and starts talking about, you know, this and that. Uh, if we'll talk about him and we'll give him praise and glory, we're going to be right in line. And we're, we're being obedient to the Bible, offering the sacrifice of our lips uh, giving praise to Him uh, and glory to Him. And so I wanted to say that. Uh, I enjoy hearing y'all give praise to God because He most definitely is worthy of our praise. This morning, we took a look at Acts chapter 4, and what we saw was we saw how that men spending time with Jesus was evident. Amen? Amen? And what we did is we read uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 13 through 22. And we got through uh, probably around verses uh, 16 or so, 13 through 16. And what we saw is we saw there in verse 13 how that being with Jesus was observable in the lives of those that had been with him. You can see it. The Bible says in verse 13 that they saw, it says that they perceived, it says that they understood, or rather that they had not took knowledge there at the end of verse 13. And so by witnessing John and Peter, uh, they were able to determine that these men had spent time with this one, Jesus Christ. And I believe that that's true today. When you spend time with Jesus, and if you have spent time with Jesus, it is observable, it is evident 
by what is seen in those, excuse me, uh, that <clears throat> have done so. And it facilitated that those men look further. And that's why it says that they saw and then they perceived and then they took knowledge. Why? Why? Because they saw them and it got their attention. I said it got their attention. I remember, I'll give you this briefly, I didn't share it this morning, but I remember preaching there over at New Waters Youth Rally a couple years ago and Brother Eddie, uh, uh, Brother Eddie Strickland there at, 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 at uh, Brother Jesse Bragg's church, he's Brother Ed's brother. It's Ed and his brother is Eddie. Amen. That's the truth. And so uh, we won't dwell there. But anyway, uh, Brother Eddie's a dandy. He's a blessing. Loves, loves to bust kids, don't he, Brother Tony? And God's put him through some things, and, and we give God praise for Brother Eddie. And he come to me, and in that message I was talking about, you know, being a light. Being a light uh, at the school. I was dealing with young people. And, and he gave a testimony of a young lady uh, that had got saved, got right with God. Is my mic on, John? I didn't even look. Okay. Got saved, got right with God, and made a vow that she was going to live a, a little bit above in her standards. You say, how so? Well, she decided that she was just going to wear long skirts to school. That's what she decided. She said, I want to be modest. I'm going to go above and beyond in this regard. And she made a vow and a vow that she was just going to wear skirts to school, long skirts. And while at school, she, of course, uh, endured some persecution for that. I, I went to school with a girl that did that, and her nickname was Skirt. I mean, it's evident. People see that. People can tell that. And this young lady made that vow and kept that vow and, and maintained that vow and didn't back up on that vow and, and towards the end of her, uh, uh, her tenure there in school, listen to me now, uh, the varsity football quarterback had a major catastrophe, some type of a wreck, some type of a, 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 a situation there where he was placed in a hospital and, and his life was, was uh, in danger, if you will, and was in need of God to do some things. And so... Uh, this man was this young man that that this quarterback. He's in he's in the hospital there, and he's in need of God to do some things. And he looked at his mom and his dad. And y'all listen to me now. This is what he said. He said, "I want y'all to go to that school and find that girl that wore skirts every day. The boy, as far as everybody knew, didn't know her, hadn't spent any time with her. They weren't friends. He just observed." And saw that she knew God in how she lived her life. And she was able to show up to the uh, hospital. Y'all listen to me tonight. Show up to the hospital. Witness to a young man she'd never spoken to that only had seen her live for Christ in an above and beyond manner. And was able to lead him to the Lord that day. Listen to me. In the hospital bed uh, after a major catastrophe. Look. People see you. Right. Amen. People see you. Yes. People see me. And we need to stop acting like we can just live and do and act however we want. And it don't matter because it does matter right. in the yes. life of a believer. Amen. Amen. So it's observable. It was obvious. It was irrefutable. They didn't debate on whether or not he'd spent time with this man or that man based off of his actions and their actions. No. They immediately after they saw him, perceived and took knowledge. Look here, hey. It was obvious, irrefutable. They had spent time with Jesus of Nazareth. Man, right. I believe it was Gandhi that was quoted saying... Uh, uh, you know, I've looked into this thing of the Bible and Jesus Christ looks and sounds really good. He said the problem is the Christians. They're the ones that give me a, 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 a hesitation to accept this Jesus of Nazareth. Why? Because a lot of folk that claim to be Christian don't look, don't act, don't talk, right. don't hold themselves, right. look here, hey, like Jesus would. Right. I am. Jesus was meek, the meekest man to ever live. Jesus was a servant to others. The God of the universe and creation, hey, was a servant to us. Us, nothing. Irrelevant in the scheme of things. And yet Christ loved us and died for us. And yet we've got Christians today. Oh, God help. 
that would never, ever allow anything to affect or hinder their pride. I'm not doing that, Brother Caleb. People might think this or people might think that about me. As the Savior hung, naked, beaten, and bloody. How dare us think that we can't be a light. Most time the reason we can't be a light is we're too embarrassed by the light that we would cast. Amen. Amen. It was obvious, irrefutable, it was remarkable. The Bible says they marveled at them. It was credible. Credible to who? Why, Jesus. They said they've spent time with the Lord Jesus. They've been with him. And they knew that by how they were living. Look with me at verse 15. The Bible says, Notice, but when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do with these? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. Notice verse 17, but it spread no, but that it spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. Y'all listening to me? They had been with Jesus. It was observable that they had been with Jesus. It was obvious that they had been with Jesus. Number three, it was offensive. It was offensive to some that they had been with Jesus. They didn't, enjoy, they didn't like that. They did not appreciate being in the presence of somebody that had been with Jesus. Are y'all listening to me? I was uh, looking today at, at Twitter and y'all know I follow a lot of preachers and one preacher got on there and this is what he said. He said, preach Jesus his death, burial, and resurrection. He said, now some people are going to appreciate it and enjoy it and receive it, and some are going to deny it and hate it. Keep preaching Jesus. And that's exactly right. Jesus said they hated me, and I'm your master. If you think they're not going to hate you, you're foolish if you're a servant of mine being your master. Now some people are going to receive it, and boy, I want to know, I want to say, I thank God for those that receive the message of God's Word. How that God's Word comes in them and changes them and they receive it and they're open to it and God manifests through them His goodness and His gospel. But in that same line of thinking, there's going to be some that don't like to see you shine a light. That young lady, listen, that I referenced that got to uh, be a witness to the football quarterback and got to see him get saved. Look here, hey, I bet you, I bet you, if she was here today, uh, she could attest to uh, multiple people that did not appreciate how she lived, that did not appreciate how she dressed, that did not appreciate how that she tried to conduct herself because they did not like or, or enjoy the idea of submitting to Jesus Christ. Man, right. That's how this thing yeah. works. Jesus to some is, is a reproach, but to others, He's magnificent. He's wonderful. And I'm afraid sometimes, listen to me, sometimes if we're not careful, uh, uh, we forget about the fact that when you actually live for Jesus, sometimes you're going to offend somebody. Right. And we just can't always stand the thoughts of somebody not enjoying or appreciating what we are. And for some reason, the church today has convinced themselves that living for Jesus means you're going to be at peace with every single person out in this world. And that's just not what Jesus said. Right. Right. Yep. Amen. Well, if, if I've got to do something, Brother Caleb, and I know somebody's not going to like it, then I'm not going to do it. Well, then you're not going to be like Jesus. Amen. Jesus walked into the synagogue where they was... Uh, turning the house of prayer into a den of thieves and they was using that building for the sake of making money and merchandising those who were coming to sacrifice. Hey! And Jesus makes a scene and runs them out of there and tells them they're wrong and tells them what the Bible says. And, and I'm here to tell you today that those Pharisees did not appreciate that, did they? No. Why? Because he was doing what was right. If we do what's right, some people are going to accept it with open arms. But now some, some ain't going to enjoy that. And guess what? That's okay. That's okay. 
The Bible's still right. The Bible's still true. Right. It was offensive. I want you to notice the conferencing of the wicked. The Bible said they conferred among themselves. That Sanhedrin council came together in regard to, listen to me now, not what they had done that was wrong, what John and Peter had done that was wrong, but to try and convince one another that they had done something that was wrong. To try and, listen to me now, to try and figure out how to have an accusation against them. Let me tell you something. This world wants to bring up an accusation against us. You're right. You know what we better be careful of? Not giving them something. Right. Amen. Amen. Now please, please, get me, hear me out here, church. I realize that we all have a past. Amen. Right. I've got things in my past I don't want nobody to know about. Amen. Don't you? Right. Right. And those things are under the blood. Amen. And I've tried Amen. my best to do right by the Lord Jesus and make those offenses right. Amen. Amen. I've, 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 I've given them to God and where I've done things to someone, I don't want them to hold it against me. I want them to, I want to remove the opportunity for them to say he never made that right. And I want to make it right. Amen. 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 He said, but Brother Shirley, they did me wrong. I, that, that is irrelevant in regards to whether or not you did them wrong. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. We're so, Amen. Con so consumed with our pride. We can't say, you know, we can't tell somebody sorry if we've got something on them. No, that's not how this thing works. Right. How this thing works is, is you doing what's right no matter what. Amen. You can be right on a situation, deal with the wrong. Deal with it the wrong way, and you are immediately wrong because you dealt with it wrong. Right. And so what we have is we've got a lot of Christians today that are holding grudges, dealing with bitterness, and, and allowing their flesh and their pride to rear its head. And we give people out in this world that are looking for something on us, we give them a, a reason to try and convince others that going to church, being a Christian, living for God, is a waste of time. And so now the church has this, this, this reputation of being full of hypocrites. And what we need to do is we need to get right with God and we need to get right with others and we need not to ever get to the place where we're so big that we can't tell somebody, I'm sorry. Amen. That I need to get right. That I've done wrong. And so what we have is we have these, these two men, John and Peter. John and Peter did it right. And they, look here, and they were living for the Lord with the right heart and with the right mind. And they weren't giving occasion to others. And you know what the other, they were still conferencing to try and find something on them. And then we find a confrontation of warning. Guess what they did? The Bible said they started threatening them. Look what the Bible says there in verse 17. It said, but that it spread no further uh, among the people, let us threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. Let us threaten them. Verse 18, they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. So what, what were they doing? They were trying to find an accusation that they might throw them in jail of some sort. But they couldn't. Why? Because there stood the man and he had been healed of his lameness and, and he had been lame and everybody knew he was lame and this was most definitely a miracle. And so they couldn't dispute that. Right. But what they tried to do was they tried to dispute whether or not Jesus had anything to do with it. And so what do they do? They start using this member to threaten them. Church, listen to me. They can say what they want to. Let them. Amen. You will live. Right. Amen. But brother Caleb, you don't know what they said. You're right. But you'll live. Amen. But brother Caleb, they made fun of me. You're... Okay. But you'll live. But you'll right. live. But you'll live. It will be okay. You will be fine. It will be work. Let me say this. Look here. Hey. It'll be worth it. It most definitely will be worth it. 
I tell you, man, I, I look back at my life and I, I go back to those years of high school. And look, young people, you know, I know I'm not going to school now, but I went to school. All right? And look, it was, it was hard. You can be a witness to those people. You can live as a Christian in front of those folk. Even in college. You can. You can. I, <laughs> I remember what it was like making sure that I was in church every time it was time for church. I remember sitting there on Western's campus. I don't remember where exactly it was, but I'm sitting on a bench and uh, I had some free time and I thought, man, I need to read my Bible. I ain't ready today. We got a long day schedule. And I had it there in my backpack and I thought, there's people everywhere. And when I pull this out, God only knows what's going to happen. Look, I seen one old boy street preaching there at the school. And they were right here wanting to crucify him. Look here. We were standing out there one day, me, Head, and Zach. Y'all remember that, that rally that went down the... And they're, they're, they, were a, they were a sodomite rally, okay? And they're, they're, they're chanting all this filth. I'm talking about vulgar words right in the middle of Western's campus. All right, that's the environment. And it's in the middle of the day. And it's at the busiest part of the day. And it's, I need to read my Bible. And I know that. And it's time... And I sit there for a minute. I think, all right, fine. Here we go, Lord. I'm just going to pull it out. Protect me. And uh, pull out my, my King James. Flip it open and go to reading it. And I'm enjoying the Bible. And I'm just trying to focus on it. Not think about what nobody sees or says. And out of nowhere, this old girl, I don't know who she was. that Never seen her since. She plopped down right beside me. She says, I want you to know something. I said, what's that? She said, I want you to know that it blesses me to see you sitting there reading that Bible. She said, there's not a lot of kids around here that would pull out a Bible right here in front of everybody. She said, I want you to know how much I appreciate that. You know what that was? That was the Lord saying, it'll be worth it. Just keep doing what's right. Amen. Amen. At work, your own break, instead of pulling this out, Maybe take your Bible to work right. and pull your Bible out. Well, I read my Bible on my phone. And that's good. But it'd be real good if they saw your Bible you was reading. Yeah. Right. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to give you an opportunity here to shine a light in this dark and wicked world. And we got to have some folk that do it. And I think that's our problem is we've got folk that has abandoned anything, any area, that makes us uncomfortable because we just can't stand the thoughts of somebody not liking us. Some are gonna and some ain't. And that's what Jesus told us. And there's something wrong somewhere if there's nobody out there, not one person out there that we are affecting that's not appreciating it and not enjoying it. You listening to me? Offense. Not only do we see that it was offensive that they had been with Jesus, but it was out of control. I kind of alluded to this a little bit this morning. I talked about how Brother Zach here, for instance. You know, if, if you know Gordon Berry, Brother Gordon Berry, and you spend time around Brother Gordon Berry, and then you spend time around Brother Zach Berry, you know what you're going to see? There's a lot of Brother Gordon that comes out of Brother Zach that he's not doing on purpose. He's not like watching dad taking notes and saying, all right, now I got to walk like this. And when I say things, this is how I got to say them. And I got to sound like this. No, because he spent all those years around Brother Gordon, guess what you'll see? You'll see Brother Gordon come out in Brother Zach. Some of y'all's getting it. Man. When you spend time with Jesus, you're not even going to be trying to. Right. It's not even going to be on purpose necessarily. Right. <laughs> Brother Charlie, I'm trying to do right. Brother Charlie, I, I just struggle with this and I struggle with that. Well, the problem is, is we ain't spent no time with Jesus and we're spending so much time with everything else that that stuff is coming out of us and we can't even control it. No, amen. Are you listening to me tonight? Amen. Amen. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that they told them boys in verse 18, do not speak 
The name Jesus. Notice verse 19. Peter and John answered. Notice. Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. Notice verse 20. For we cannot speak the things which we have seen. We cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. In other words, we can't help it. We've spent this time seeing it. We've spent this time hearing it. We have been around God. We've been around the Lord Jesus. It is out of our control at this point because we know what we know and it comes from the Word of God. Did you hear that? Hey, it come from God's Word. What was God's Word for them? Go out and preach and teach Jesus and baptize them and start the church. That's what God said. Start in Jerusalem and spread across the whole world. What was the message that they were supposed to preach? Jesus. Who was it that they recognized in these boys? Jesus. Right. That's our command. What, listen to me now. What was it that those Hebrew boys refused to bow their knee down to Nebuchadnezzar over? Disobeying God's word. They would not disobey, listen to me, the literal word of God. And so because they knew the literal word of God, which is don't bow down to any other image, they looked at Nebuchadnezzar and said, we will not do that. And if God lets you kill us, he's going to have to do it, but we still ain't going to do it. What did Peter and John tell them? They said, God's told us to do this. We're doing what God would have us to do. If you think that's wrong, that's your prerogative. But we can't help ourselves but to be like Jesus. And how do we know how to be like Jesus? Because he told us how in his word. Right? Amen. And a lot of us want to act like we know what God's word says and we've never even read it. Right. Man. Can't tell you the last time we flipped it open and, and read the word of God and spent time reading God's word in this here King James Version. I'm talking about read it from cover to cover. Genesis to Revelation. Many of us claim to have been saved 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years. And they never read a whole book of the Bible. Never read a whole testament. Never read the whole Bible. And we didn't get after that. Why? Because uh, this is God's word. This is how he talks to us. Amen. Right you want to hear from him? Right here it is. Amen. Right here it is. Stop waiting on the light to shine out of heaven. That ain't how God operates anymore. He did, hey, Look here. He gave that to them. And what good did it do for the Jews? All it did was it gave God the, 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 the right to say, I still gave you signs. I still gave you wonder and you still didn't bow your knee to him. Let me give you something. Signs and wonders. A lot said about signs and wonders. These, this charismatic church that wants to believe in speaking in tongues and, and healings and, and you never find them at the baby's uh, hospitals and healing people and, and right. helping. No, but they talk about all these signs and wonders like it's still available today, like we can be apostles, and it's just not true. Right. And they want to act like, look here, if we had the signs, then everything would be better. <coughs> what happened when that rich man was in hell? He looked at, he, he, he talking to, he said, send somebody to my brothers. In other words, send them somebody from here. A wonder, a wondrous sign, a wonder for them. Send a sign to them. Do something amazing for them. And if you do that, they believe. And they wouldn't come where I am. You know what Abraham said? He said, if they won't believe Moses and the prophets, what's he referencing, church? God's word. Yep. God's word. That's it. God's word. What's the answer? God's word. I'm not interested in, in a vision. I'm not interested in a premonition. I'm interested in what that book right there says. And I'm willing, listen to me, and we better, we better commit ourselves to this. We better commit ourselves to, I and you, we as a church are willing to look at the world and oppose the world at all costs when they start requiring us to do something that goes directly against right. what this book says. It may be. And when, look here, and when that day comes, and God forbid it does, we look at them with God's word in hand and say, we will not back up on this for God's word says not to. Right. Oh. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And no, no very well. They're going to threaten us. Sure. That's okay. Amen. That's okay. 
I tolerate threats. Amen. I tolerate threats. Can't you? We say that. Is it apparent in our life? Is it apparent? It was offensive. It was out of control. Accountability, responsibility, necessity. You won't even know your mannerisms have changed until someone reveals it to you after you've spent time with Jesus. I, I, I remember a message by a man one time talking about reading God's word, reading just copious amounts of it at one time. He talked about reading the whole Bible through in a month, which I'll be honest, man, y'all have heard me read. It's, it's pathetic, amen? And, and I, I, you know, that's something I, I, maybe one day I'll set out to just take a month and just do it. But this man, he was a wonderful reader, just speed reader. He'd read 45 minutes twice a day, get through the Bible every month. And he told somebody else that made a commitment to do that, he said, now, this way he told him, he said, now, I want you to do something. He said, when it happens, he said, call me. And the guy said, when what happens? He said, you'll know when it happens. I always get aggravated when somebody does that. Now, like, who do you think you are? Like, you ain't some angel or something, right? Just tell me what you're saying. I'm not smart enough for this. Well, the guy said, okay, fine. When it happens, I'll call you. And the guy read every month the whole Bible. Read it every month. Read the whole Bible once a month, every month. And after multiple months, he found himself referencing and quoting scriptures that he never committed to memory. He found himself giving counsel from the scriptures that he never even spent time trying to wrap his mind around. Listen to me. It just started oozing out of him without his control. Why? Because he was digesting such a large amount of it Look here, because he was spending time with Jesus, because he had been with Jesus so much, Jesus started manifesting in his life, and he wasn't even trying. Y'all listening to me tonight? He can't, Brother Zachary can't help. I see Gordon and him sitting right there. I mean, he just can't, he can't help it. Why? He spent so much time with him. And that's what we need to do. Uh, 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 we need to uh, uh, look and, and uh, endeavor to, to acquire this life where Jesus, man, he's just, he's just in me. Why? Because I've spent so much time with him. Amen. I've spent so much time with him. I think about Miss Gracie, or uh, yeah, Miss Gracie, I believe it was, or Hazel. I can't remember her name. She lived over there. She was, you talk to those men like my dad, brother, brother Gordon, brother Terry, those men over where we're from, and they reference this lady like she was just, she knew God. Her and God were tight. You know what I mean? Like on a, Christine, that's it, on a personal level. And dad, I've told this here, dad talks about how he was taking her to an appointment and her way up in years and he showed up with his car and she comes and gets in the back seat. She didn't want nobody to think nothing about her riding around with a young man like Tim Shirley. Amen. And she's in the back seat and he's headed down the road and he's just talking. And there was a little break there. And when he went to talk, she didn't answer. He turned and looked and she wasn't, she was gone. He said, I didn't see her. He said, so I literally, he said, I turned and looked and she's in the floorboard of that back seat of that car praying. And he was like, oh Lord. So he just got quiet, went to driving and she finally sat up. He said, he said, Miss Christine, he said, I didn't know where you went for a second. I thought, I didn't know what to think. She said, Tammy, I made my mind up a long time ago. This time of day, I was going to pray, and it didn't matter where I sat. You know what she realized? My time with Jesus is more important than anything. My time with the Lord Jesus is more important than anything. There's nothing. My hobby my job, my soap opera, come on now, my TV show, my cell phone, there's nothing more important than my time with Jesus. It's, it's vital to my existence. It was out of control. They had been with Jesus. Last thing I'm done, it was outstanding that they had been with Jesus. It was outstanding. You say, how so? It affected people. I already told you about the people it affected negatively, but then there was a bunch that it affected positively. 
Look there at verse 21. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them. Notice, because of the people for, notice, all men glorified God for that which was done. Some of them was trying to conference against them, conspire. How can we get them? How can we trip them up? How can we find something against them? But now there was a bunch of others that saw how they were living, saw the things they were accomplishing, witnessed those things, listen to me now, and realized this is God. This is God's doings, and God deserves the glory. Boy, I'm thankful today how that people see uh, 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 the life of a Christian and can, can recognize Jesus in that, and it's outstanding, it's striking, it's excellent, it's effective, friend. God was glorified because of their faithfulness, and God was glorified by others who were affected by how they conducted their life. They had spent so much time with Jesus. They had spent so much time with the Savior that it affected others to the point that they then glorified God because of those that they witnessed. He said, Brother Shaw, you just preached on this this morning. You're preaching on it again. It's because I'm afraid we don't value Amen. our time with Jesus like we ought to. You're up. You're up. Amen. We value our time with our video game. We value our time with our hobby, our cell phone, Facebook, God help us. For this younger generation, it's Snapchat or TikTok or Instagram or whatever. Me and Brother Zach got called a, a boomer the other day because we got Facebook. This little kid don't have Facebook. Why? Because that's for old people. Like who'd have thought it? Amen. Amen. Should have told him he had my space. He wouldn't know what they got. <laughs> What'd you say? He had a panic. Amen. Those, those social media platforms, our boyfriend and girlfriend. I know a young man one time broke up with a girl because he said he was finding himself neglecting Jesus in order to be with her. I say amen. Y'all listening? If, if, if being with somebody, being in a relationship with somebody has to cause you to neglect the Lord Jesus, then it's probably not of Jesus. Right. 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 If they get jealous, amen, because you're spending so much time in church or with Jesus, something wrong somewhere, run. Amen. <laughs> amen. Run. Hide. Don't have nothing to do with that. That's not of God. That's not of the Savior. No. This is two, two times today. Two messages today on this thought. Spending time with Jesus. And it's not just for the men. And, and let me just say, men, men of our church, you're to set a standard for your home. Amen. You're to set a standard. You ought to be the standard for time spent with Jesus. There ought not be a question in your home as to whether or not you spend time with Jesus. Amen. And that you know me. That you and him have a relationship. Amen. Amen. But let me just tell you, ma'am, ladies, spend time with Jesus. Your children need to see you spending time with Jesus. <coughs> when you're standing at the sink and you're washing your dishes or you fill in your dishwasher, whatever you do, however you do that, listening to some good music. It'd be all right if sometimes you got in on worshiping the Lord in your house in front of your family where tears are going off your cheeks and you got to go find somewhere to humble yourself and bow down before Him because God's doing something inside of you in your house spending time with Jesus. Amen. 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 Right. Jesus is not Amen. confined to these four walls. Amen. 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 He, yes. You can get in on Jesus anywhere. Right. Problem is, we don't get in on him because we ain't spending any time with him. Young people, young people here at Grace Pass, let me tell you something. We're big on you having a Bible. Man. If you ain't got a Bible, let me know. We'll give you one. But I want to say all our young people have one. That pew you're sitting in is not where that Bible is supposed to sit. Right. Amen. 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 
All of you got a Bible case. A Bible case is so you can pack it easier. You got a handle on it. You know, I got one with no handle. That don't make any sense, does it? <laughs> but it's my Bible case. I ain't using it. Heather bought it for me. I'm going to use it till I die. Lord, well, unless it wears out. It's a leather Bible case, no handle. But I use that when I go listen to preaching. And I don't leave it in the pew. Why? Because that Bible is supposed to go with me. Right. Young people, we've got you a Bible. We've got you a case. We took care of you on that regard. You got your color pencils. You got a nice Bible. You can color in it. It's got to read it. Spend time in that thing. Why? Because Jesus is in there. And he might just sneak up on you. And you might be in there just reading it, trying to spend time with it. And look here, and the Holy Ghost go to stirring up inside. I'm talking about of a teenager's heart. And you start enjoying how good God's been to you because you read about it in His Word because you're not so ignorant that you can't spend time with Jesus. The Bible said they looked at Paul or Peter and John and said, these boys are ignorant. They're uneducated. And yet, they recognize Jesus in them. I'm afraid some of these young people think I'm just not smart enough to spend time with Jesus in the Bible. Yes, you are. Amen. Oh, but that King James is hard to read. No, it ain't. That's a yeah. lie. Yeah. Right. Amen. And you can find Jesus in those pages. Amen. Just don't never read it. Because we're watching too much TV, watching uh, too much cell phone, playing uh, too much video game, watching too much whatever. And y'all know I'm right. Amen. Y'all know I'm right. And what it's time is it's time we start punching the elephant in the room right in the nose. And say we ain't spending any time with it. None. If I look back at my life this past week, we need to be honest with ourselves. The amount of time I spent with Jesus wasn't near as much as I should. Amen. Amen. Am I right about it, Grace Baptist? If we be real with ourselves. And look, I'm not talking about trying to uh, build a facade. I'm talking about being real. I'm talking about really being real. And the only way we'll ever be real is when we spend time with the Savior. I'm talking about get intimate with Him. I was listening to a preacher. I'm talking about a war horse for God. A man that has started a major work Hashed it for years and years. Might near crippled now. Got a big Bible college. And he was talking about the intimacy he gets to experience with Jesus and how important that is to him today and how unworthy he feels. Y'all listening? A lot of us, man, we ain't doing near enough for God as we should. Amen. And we think, I don't need to spend so much time with him. I'll be okay. I've got this going on, that going on. If we spent more time with him, that wicked flesh wouldn't rear its head near as much. Those temptations wouldn't be near as strong. I said those temptations wouldn't be near as strong. Those lusts, that flesh... Oh, how we need more of Him and less of everything else. Let's stand to our feet. We're not going to have a song tonight. We're just going to spend some time together as a church family. This is our Sunday evening worship service. You're here because you're committed to Him, and I commend you for that. You're here to spend time with Him, and I commend you for that. The question is simple. Are you spending enough? Brother Caleb, I got right with the, about this this morning. Yeah, but did you? We go to church. We hear the preacher. We walk out. Little changes. My question is again tonight. How serious are we about spending the time with Christ that we need? How valuable is that to you? Miss Christine said, I made my mind up a long time ago, Timmy. At this time every day, it didn't matter where I was, me and Jesus, look here, had an appointment.
I said they had an appointment. We got a doctor's <laughs> appointment. We're there early. We're sitting in the waiting room. We're waiting for that thing. We know how much we need it. Right? Come on now. But now we don't have any appointment with Jesus. It's just whenever I can fit him in, if I fit him in. Really? Really? 